food agri and allied services practice within gnps within our government practice uh, uh, this is the day 2 of the world food india and uh, as part of this knowledge session uh, we are going to discuss the untapped food opportunities that jharkhand offers and uh, obviously we are going to focus on millets as one of the key crops towards that um, जब भी किसी टॉपिक पे डिस्कशन होता है या किसी प्रॉब्लम का सलूशन ढूंढना होता है हम टिपिकली कहते हैं कि अगर गवर्नमेंट इंडस्ट्री और एकेडमिया साथ में आ जाए तो एक अच्छा सलूशन निकल के आ सकता है और उसी कॉन्टेक्स्ट में आज का जो हमारा पैनल है आई एम वेरी प्रिवलेज टू हाईलाइट दैट इट हैज़ पार्टिसिपेंट्स फ्रॉम गवर्नमेंट फ्रॉम इंडस्ट्री एज वेल एज अकेडमिया एंड आई वुड लाइक टू वेलकम दी पैनलिस्ट फर्स्ट डॉक्टर अबू बकर सिद्दीकी सर Uh, he's in. Uh, he's the secretary, Department of Agriculture, Animal Husbandry and Cooperative Government of Jharkhand. He served on various key positions in government of Jharkhand since last twenty years, on various departments such as agriculture, mines and geology, and health and family welfare. A very warm welcome to you, sir. He's a 2003 batch IAS officer. Uh, next, uh, I would like to invite uh, Shri Jitendra Kumar Singh. He is a 2008 batch IAS officer. He is the Secretary Industries, Government of Jharkhand, and has served again on numerous key positions within Government of Jharkhand and in the Industries Department. He has been there for more than four years now. Uh, next, I would like to invite Shri Shushant Gaurvji, who is the who is an IAS officer of 2014 batch. He is the Director Industries, Government of Jharkhand. He is the recipient of Prime Minister's Award. for excellence in public administration for his work uh, in transforming gumla from a poverty stricken district into a ra into the ragi capital of india very warm welcome to all three of you sir uh, next from the industry we have representation uh, we have mrs aruna tirki she is the founder and managing director of ajam emba ajam emba uh, in local dialect means good taste and her uh, work on food systems is triggered on the concern around disappearing food systems of jharkhand which are actually promising alternatives for a earth facing climate challenge uh, next i would like to in, um, invite mr manish piyush who is the founder of puresh daily foods private limited puresh dairy is a dairy and fresh food startup which disrupts delivery of dairy products and other essential food um items to consumers using technology reliable quality and chemical free products last uh, we have from the academia professor arun kumar who who is the assistant professor at birsa agriculture university he brings in more than 23 years of experience um, you know including research experience on agri crops uh, he's also got experience in varietal improvement of crops like maize cotton mustard and millets can we have a big round of applause for all our panelists as part of the session today millets jaisa ki aap sab jante hain ek nayi crop nahi hai aur ek naya cereal nahi hai it's one of the oldest cereals that has been grown by humans and in fact it was perhaps the first grain that was uh, you know sown for domestic purposes but over the years green revolution jab se aaya uh, our focus from a food perspective shifted to rice wheat etc crops बट अब एक वापस हम देख रहे हैं कि एक चॉइस ऑफ फूड मिलेट्स इज एमर्जिंग एज अ चॉइस ऑफ फूड स्पेशली गिवन दी हेल्थ बेनिफिट्स अगर आपको पता हो मिलेट्स को हम सुपर फूड भी कहते हैं बिकॉज मिलेट्स का जो मैक्रो न्यूट्रिय कॉन्टेंट है जिसमें फाइबर भी है प्रोटीन भी है वाइटमिन भी हैं मिनरल्स भी हैं कैल्शियम और मैग्नीशियम टाइप के मिनरल्स भी हैं एंड दर फोर इट इज़ नोन एज अ सुपर फूड एंड Uh, एक और चीज़ जो इम्पॉर्टेंट है मिलेट्स के बारे में कि ये क्लाइमेट रिस्पॉन्सिव क्रॉप है बिकॉज इट रिक्वायर्स लेस वाटर एज वेल एज लेस एग्रीकल्चरल इनपुट्स द स्टेट ऑफ झारखंड ऑफर्स अ फेवरेबल कंडीशन फॉर मिलेट कल्टीवेशन इनफैक्ट झारखंड इंडिया की टॉप सेवन स्टेट्स में है एज फार एज रागी प्रोडक्शन इज कंसर्न एंड इनफैक्ट द चैलेंज इज दैट मोस्ट ऑफ दिस Uh, um, uh, millets is sold in its raw form. So processing बहुत ज़्यादा इसमें नहीं हो रही है और value addition बहुत ज़्यादा इसमें नहीं हो रही है and that is one of the areas which is clearly untapped. और उसी पर आज हम चर्चा करेंगे uh, The session aims to generate awareness about millet production, 
uh, also the kind of opportunities that entrepreneurs have in the state of Jharkhand as far as millets and other food processing is concerned. Uh, with that, uh, uh, you know, uh, before that, uh, we'll also have an open house discussion while we'll have different presentations and uh, uh, discussions within the panel members. But if you have any questions or queries, if you are entrepreneurs who are sitting here and want invest in the food processing unit, you can note your questions. Note kar sakte we'll have an open house discussion towards the end of the session. Uh, wherein we'll take up your questions as well. With that, let me invite Professor Arun Kumar to talk about the suitable millet varieties for Jharkhand and their production productivity enhancement. Professor Arun. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizer of the state government government of Jharkhand for giving me such an opportunity to share my views at this moment. So everybody knows about the millets and its health benefits, nutritional benefits. And now they are planning and business house are also planning to establish millet based industries but before entering into the industries we must have the raw material in abundant form in this context the university plays very big role particularly agriculture university so that the production of the millets could be enhanced and before enhancing the production we must think about the what are the constraints what are the limitations that becomes hurdles to increase the productions in this context i don't want to go in much detail about the millets, what are the millets and what are the uh, health benefits. But it is said as a climate resilient, nutri cereal, superfoods based on the several properties. It can be grown in a drought like situations requires very less water and millets are cultivator friendly they can grow even in the nutritionally poor soil also and it is highly nutritious that's why it is beneficial for the consumer also so these are the three C properties in the millets C4 climate resilience, C4 cultivator friendly and one C stands for consumer nutritional for the nutrition for the consumers. There are so many health benefits of the millets. It is the powerhouse of the nutrition. So many minerals and rich source of dietary fibers and it controls several diseases particularly type 2 diabetes there are so many benefits of the millets and this benefit is supported by the data of the their nutritional composition as compared to rice and wheat but the safe life of the millets are low why it is so because of the presence of higher amount of fats as compared to rice and wheat and that is due to the lipase activity and that causes rancidity so we have achieved up to the five to seven months safe life but for the purpose of export it should be up to 12 months 
So these are the different kinds of millets we can grow in the state of Jharkhand. But primarily we are focusing on the finger millets. So far as the status of the millets is concerned, India contribute around 38.4 percent in the world and in India out of the different millets, Bajra occupying around 61 percent acreage followed by Jwar and then Ragi. If you see the status of the Jharkhand so far as millet production is concerned, as per the latest data of the final advance estimate, finger millets is the dominating one followed by Jwar and Bajra. But uh, still we have to achieve the higher productivity. So this is the 10 years data of millets. Now during the last year we have crossed the 1 ton productivity in the state. So before setting the industry I have mentioned that raw material should be available in a big quantity. So what are the challenges of the reduction of the uh, low production of the millets? So number one is the decline in the area due to shift in land use. These are the several factors which cause a decline in the area of the millet production. Number one. Number two, low productivity of millets. Why it is so? Due to non availability of quality seed of high yielding variety well in time to the farming community. It is one of the biggest challenge in the state of Jharkhand. So it should be taken into account how to address this issue. <coughs> because seed production takes long time, it is not the job of overnight job. So we should think, we should plan seed rolling plant for the state of Jharkhand for at least for the five years. Weed management because millets belongs to the Gramni family and it looks like the grasses also. So farmers are not doing the weed management practices. INM there is no focus on the INM integrated nutrient management and integrated pest management. Though millet uh, uh, is very hardy crops and uh, very less uh, uh, disease and insect pests infestations are occur, but uh, still Bajra and Sorghum have uh, uh, affected by the number of diseases. So other are the, uh, so the availability of resistant variety, low investment in research and development, nowadays focus on the development of biofortified varieties. So, so we should think about that to develop the biofortified varieties also. There is lack of awareness pertaining to health benefits from the peoples and it is competition between the rice and wheat which is the major staple crops. So it has to compete with the rice and wheat also. Earlier it is, it was known as the poor man's crop and now the processed food of the millets we can have a very high price. So now it is out of reach to the common people day by day. So these are the other limited availability of value added products. There is no any market organized market. It is not available abundantly to the common people. So to increase the production, promotion, consumption, Government of India has launched the seven sutra, enhancement of production productivity, nutrition and health benefit, value added pro processing and recipe development, entrepreneurship setup, collective development, awareness creation, international outreach, policy investment for mainstream. These are the seven sutra to increase the millet production, consumption. So, we need, we need to enhance the area under millet production. 
but nutri food security should not be incurred should not be ignored so keeping in that mind if you see the uh, area under rice in the state of jharkhand it is around 19 lakh hectare and it is uh, categorized at the agro climatic basis so upland rice is around 5.5 lakh hectare in the state of jharkhand nowadays upland rice is very less profitable so these area could be tapped up under the millet production gradually so this way we can increase exp horizontal expansion of the uh, area under millets and by which we can increase the production in the state so coming to the uh, as my topic is the varietal suitable variety for the state of jharkhand so some of the varieties uh, under the uh, finger millets have been developed by the birsa agriculture university ranchi is like age 404 uh, birsa madhuva 2 birsa madhuva 3 and now recently we have we are uh, we have developed jharkhand white madhuva it is white seeded ragi uh, suitable for the confectionery purpose uh, it is under process of the uh, state varietal release committee and uh, but it is under the cultivation of the farming community particularly in Uh, Karra uh, block of the this uh, Khuti district, and it is performing very well, and uh, like by the farming community. And next one is the BBM thirteen is also one of the variety uh, recently will develop by the university. And in addition to the uh, variety development of the Birsa Agriculture University, some other varieties are also available uh, suitable for the state of Jharkhand like. VL 376, VL 379, GPU 67, and these are the uh, this CFMB one and CFMB two variety is uh, bio fortified variety of ragi finger millet, and another one variety Virsa Gundli. Gundli is out of the cultivation in the state of Jharkhand nowadays. So we have to promote. Why I have uh, uh, shown the slides of the different kinds of millets. Uh, most of the millets are out of cultivation in the state of Jharkhand. so uh, we have to preserve them and we have to inculcate uh, them uh, increase them in uh, production in the, in the farming field uh, as uh, our uh, at our research uh, places uh, like uh, jowar bajra and gundli foxtail proso and barnyard all the millets we we are growing but uh, uh, farmers uh, particularly minor millets the problem with the farmers is there is no primary processing facility because these minor millets required primary processing facility uh, and there is cost involvement so we should have we should think over that so these are the different variety available uh, suitable for the state of jharkhand Uh, this is the photograph of white ragi de recently developed by the university and these are the some uh, uh, initiatives taken by the uh, other institutions to develop the bio fortified variety rightly available uh, uh, to the different institutes uh, particularly in uh, pearl millets the the normal variety have the 45 to 50 ppm of iron and 30 to 235 ppm of zinc but the bio fortified variety is very rich in iron content and zinc you can uh, visualize the uh, uh, bio uh, properties of the bio fortified variety is very high quantity of and likewise in the finger millet uh, high in uh, grain zinc rich in calcium as compared to the 200 mg per 100 g uh, uh, in normal variety uh, the uh, cfmb1 and cfmb2 are very rich in the calcium content so these are the some bio fortified variety by which we can uh, uh, use uh, this variety can be used in the different processed food making the different processed food so that the nutritional uh, availability to the uh, general people could be available so these are the different opportunities in the uh, field of millets like food processing big, biggest uh, opportunity in value added products and these are the different min inclusion in midday meal 
so we should create the demand by uh, uh, inclusion in mid day meal program pub public pds system icds railway and tourism export opportunities also so these are the different uh, opportunities for the uh, processed food of the millets so these are the uh, foods some of the examples i have placed here uh, the the uh, value added products is uh, developed by the birsa agriculture university and number of products are also uh, uh, farming community are also involved to developing these uh, value added products in the state of jharkhand there are different recipes available uh, 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 with the millets Uh, these are the packaged food products these are the different avenues where the 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 business house can play the role they are already playing they are playing the role but in the state of jharkhand it requires uh, to invest in this field sector also these are the millet based drinks and beverages there are so many drinks available in the uh, with the millets and uh, it attracts the the millet based alcoholic drinks are also nowadays available in the market so it is also one of the avenues millet based ice cream the, so there are so many avenues uh, for the uh, processed food of the millets so animal feed is also available with the millets it is also highly nutritious to the animal feeds birds feeds so these are the different avenues so uh, these are the different promotional activities uh, in the uh, uh, by the uh, agriculture university so so if you if you increase the area and production of the millets we should we should focus on the uh, demonstration of the already proven technology among the farming communities uh, these are the different promotional activities uh, displaying in the kisan mela and other things and the print and electronic media uh, we are uh, prom uh, promoting the millets production in the state of jharkhand jharkhand so in nut cell need to strengthen strengthen the seed production system number one coming to the conclusion part need to disseminate the proven technology in the large scale uh, creating awareness for the millet cultivation consumption uh, and nutritional and health benefits organizing conference these are the different uh, points to be taken into consideration for the uh, increasing in the area of production and productivity as well as the consumption of the millets so thank you very much uh, with this uh, thank you thank you professor arun for that insight food presentation in fact aapne jo baat kahi three c's of uh, millets uh, climate resilient cultivator friendly as well as consumer friendly और इनफैक्ट जो आपने यू नो वे फॉरवर्ड भी बताया है कि हमें आर एंड डी में इन्वेस्ट करना है सीड प्रोडक्शन बढ़ाना है लैंड एरिया बढ़ाना है मिलेट्स की कल्टिवेशन का वी आल्सो हैव टू सम हाउ इन्श्योर दैट दी फार्मर्स हैव एक्सेस टू और आर एबल टू सेटअप प्राइमरी प्रोसेसिंग फैसिलिटीज़ और उसके लिए कैसे यू नो जो भी फंडिंग है या बाकी मीन्स अवेलेबल कराया जाए और लास्टली दी एंटायर प्रमोशन पार्ट ऑफ इट बिकॉज वो क्रिटिकल रहेगा स्पेशली वन वी लुक एट मिलेनियल्स एंड जेनजीज उनको कैसे हम मूव करें मिलेट फूड की तरफ और आपने जो जिस तरीके के प्रोडक्ट्स दिखाए चाउमिन और आई थिंक दिल बी वेरी वेरी यू नो very very interest uh, they will be of much interest by the millennials and gen zs as well lastly i think i would like to congratulate jo birsa university kaam kar raha hai in terms of r and d as well as jo aapne you know promotion ka kaam kiya hai to so thank you there uh, next i would like to invite dr abu bakar sir uh, sir uh, would like to uh, invite you to talk about the agriculture production as well as uh, the landscape in jharkhand sir जहार रेस्पेक्टेड माय कॉलीग सेक्रेटरी इंडस्ट्रीज दिवेंदर डायरेक्टर इंडस्ट्रीज सुशांत डॉक्टर अरुण फ्रॉम बी एयू मिस श्रीमती अरुणा मिस्टर मनीष एंड द पार्टनर हिमांशु thank you himanshu for setting the context and also as a true academician mr arun has covered 
from mud to mug, almost all the landscape of Millet, and also the issues. It is really uh, good to hear from people like academics and research oriented people. What are the issues and what are the gaps so that the administrative officers or the policy makers get some kind of feedback and some kind of idea to uh, go ahead, yeah, to move further. So maybe some of the part of my discussion also may be having overlapping or maybe repetition still. Already uh, covered by Mr. Arun, again still, we all know when we talk about the millets, especially in the context, context of Jharkhand, if you see the social demographic situation of Jharkhand, Jharkhand is a one state with almost 30 percent population of the tribal communities. So Jharkhand had a very traditional touch of millets. It was part of their dietary habits since long. Unfortunately, after this green revolution and the overemphasis on paddy and such the kind of things, over a period of time, the dietary habits have been changed. Now people are more on the paddy and also somehow the government was also was promoting more on paddy. When we talk about agriculture, always large scale production, always the focus was on paddy. But now things are changing. And for from the context of Jharkhand, if you see the last two drought years, that was a kind of wake up call, a natural call for the state and the administrators. So, it is the high time we should diversify. We should also see the potential of items which are less water prone and something uh, other than paddy. So that was kind of wake up call. And when we talk about the climate resilient agriculture also, this diversification becomes more important. So that is why Jharkhand also now moving towards more promotion and more supporting towards millet. And from this that perspective, the discussion today the mill on millet will certainly will help to the government to further modify their programs and policies, I believe so. Already type of millets and production etc. has already been covered, so I am not repeating that. So some of the concerns or challenges has, have already been mentioned by Mr. Arun, but still no, the fastly changing climate was now you know even this year, though we were having a fear of again repetition of drought but somehow later we got the rain and now we are expecting relatively better yield of paddy this year but again this year also our uh, season got little shifted so the ordinary sowing time has got shifted and every year it is getting shifted so that is also a part of climate weather issues so when we see agriculture from the perspective of climate change this millet kind of diversified products are very much important. So diversification is the, it is not simply a kind of uh, innovation now, it is became a necessity for to survive. So for that already said, increasing production and productivity is very important. If you want to have a, a kind of uh, chain system, real environment which is produ production to process and product then we need to have productivity en enhanced so that enough raw material is available and for that suitable policies and also technology and also the participation of the farmers is very important. So from this context, Jharkhand last year launched a new mission which is called Jharkhand Millet Mission. So my focus is on this in the agriculture department. We have last year we launched, earlier Odisha government has launched the Odisha Millet Mission on almost same pattern, Jharkhand also launched the Jharkhand Millet Mission. Last year we had the budget uh, of 50 crore and this year also again another 50 crore we have budgeted for the mission. And the idea is to promote the millet in different way. The first silent feature, yeah, first part of it, every uh, we are targeting at present only almost 48,000 hectare area have been covered under millet. Now we are targeting another five years. The millet area should be enhanced up to five lakh hectares. And also we are uh, envisaging to demonstrate the improved millet production post harvest technologies to bring 
uh, more technology to bring more good practices to the millet area to conserve and promote millet la uh, land raises through seed system and seed bank because already it is mentioned the seed is a big concern so the uh, traditional historically proven uh, varieties are there that to be conserved that to be protected and also new research to be pumped in to bring good or more better seeds and also this mission is also aiming to promote support primary proce processing enterprises in the area of millet so the silent feature is the government is proposing to pay 3000 rupees per hectare per acre as a kind of incentive to the millet producers because they may be having a kind of concern why they should shift from paddy or some other uh, originally established practices to some new practices so government is supporting a 3000 rupees per acre as a incentive to the millet producers and uh, the state is also proposing to demonstrate 5 to 10 hectares of clusters in each block to encourage best practices wherein the entire responsibility will be borne by the government and also the mission is also proposing to assist fpos startups cooperative bodies or entrepreneurs if they uh, establish primary processing or millet cafeteria or such kind of any activities in the to promote millet government will be able to support them and we also have another scheme especially with the with regard to fpo if any fpo working in jharkhand if they are doing good we are also have another scheme grant to fpos under that scheme also we are giving 15 lakh rupees for every fpo initially to equity match share and thereafter if they are performing well every year I mean for the last next 4 years we will be giving another 10 lakh each that means in 5 years they will be getting 55 lakh as a subsidy from the government side and also this mission is also proposing to give uh, cash awards to best farmers and millet seed banks and also financial assistance to government supported institutions to uh, plan any kind of research or value addition activities and also capacity building and uh, online data management all these activities are proposed under this millet mission the challenge is already mentioned by mr arun the availability of millet seed is a big issue and whenever we plan as of now we don't have enough seeds so seed is a big challenge so mission is also supporting that and uh, there is no uniformity in cultivation practices it is not necessary to have a uniform practice as well but still there should be certain standard of every practices no otherwise we may not get the uh, expected outcome and cost benefit against paddy and pulses because people will be comparing you now why if we cultivate this millet what is the benefit we are going to accrue so uh, that should be examined and supported and market linkage because we know production in a, uh, alone will not do unless the farmers get support through a market linkage and good uh, get good cost good price the system will not survive so market linkage is also is challenge and the mission is also supporting that and also uh, varieties it is already mentioned by mr arun the ba is working on that and other icr institutions also working and in jharkhand also last year we re released almost 16 varieties in bau and again we will be releasing new varieties and productivity is also a big issue so if you see in most of the cases jharkhand productivity is comparatively lesser than the national averages other than pulse and oil seed we are at par or better than uh, national average but most of the other varieties other uh, agricultural products we are lagging behind the national average so we sh it is a time we should work put into more research and more technology so that productivity is enhanced the farmers get the due outcome opportunities also discussed by mr arun so this is symbol you now for any entrepreneur if you Nowadays, everybody is talking about millet, International Year of Millet, this was just completed. So now, almost millet came back to our food habits. Now, if you see in every market and food stalls and even other government-sponsored programs and all, millet became one of the items at least in the table. So there is a lot of opportunities are coming up. 
so if anybody want to uh, enter into the millet processing area there are a lot of activities there whether it is millet cafeteria or it is in the primary processing area or if even they want to export or millet seed bank all this area opportunities are available in jharkhand and government is supporting and further jindra will be explaining to you uh, through industrial department also for processing units there are enough policy supports and uh, incentives and subsidies etc available so i would request uh, the potential investors to look upon the jharkhand and to come and also take benefit of the policies and programs with this words i wish all the best for the program and also expect some of the discussions and deliberations today will will be collected and will be used for our further policy making and improvising our existing policies thank you jai hind Uh, thank you so much sir uh, for taking us through I, i think it's a great initiative the jharkhand millet mission 2024 uh, to 2029 and i think it looks like a very very well thought out strategy you know looking at the entire value chain you know right from the seed production to uh, cultivation practices and then to exports as well as market linkages uh, in fact uh, you know and if there are again you know there are a lot of opportunities uh, you know which exist Uh, purely because in jharkhand today also there is a lot of raw material available but it's sold uh, without being processed etc so if there are investors who are looking to set up or enter into uh, millet processing i think it's a great great opportunity uh, for you to look at jharkhand as one of the uh, destinations for this uh, with that uh, let me invite uh, shri shushant gaurav uh, to talk about the overall food basket of jharkhand and what role does millet play uh, also how millet uh, transform the rural economy of gumla in jharkhand sir over to you good afternoon seniors dignitaries on and off the dais uh i will talk about jharkhand in general then uh, a look uh, at the agriculture part then the horticulture and then at last the millet part so what is jharkhand jharkhand is uh, basically known for being the mineral rich state of east central india being rich in coal iron ore and uh, mica but what we need is a realization of potential that uh, the state holds in agriculture horticulture millet based production processing marketing branding so basically the advantage that jharkhand state has is regarding the diversity of agro climatic zones which is suitable for a variety of such production as per the report it is among the highest uh, production uh, producer state of horticulture and uh, it has a tremendous opportunity in agroforestry produce cashew processing medicinal plant processing honey production milk and meat production as well as processing so one by one we will see as in uh, how this can be uh, uh, justified the total area of the state is around 80 lakh hectare and one of the major advantage is uh, it has around 30% of the area under forest which is moist deciduous to the dry deciduous having variety of minor forest produce at the same time around 50% of the area is under cultivation so there are a variety of produce and the variety of agro climatic zones provides us a wide range of production agriculture as well as horticulture but the focus is on horticulture as well as the millet because only the 15% of the area is under irrigation so the primary dependency of the agriculturist is on uh, growing short term horticulture crops and the millet crops and uh, as far as uh, we have seen the land and the output the input uh, we have the human resource that is the manpower also uh, around 80% of the rural population is directly or indirectly dependent on the agriculture so there is also a labor force that is supporting what we need is entrepreneurship as well as the fund or the capital 
to, to uh, ensure a boost in this agro processing industry. Now, the focus is on horticulture. Why? Because 50% of the state agriculture GDP uh, is accounted by the horticulture produce or its product as well as sale. So why horticulture is so hit or such a uh, uh, hit in uh, the state? It is because of uh, there is a variety of product base, variety of land. Uh, there is a high volume of uh, produce all through the year. You can see Jharkhand is second largest tomato producer of the country, fifth largest in peas, beans and pear. There is a Netherhart Hill, it's a very wonderful tourist place and uh, is, is one of the highest producer at a single point in pear. And sixth largest producer in cabbage, okra and cauliflower. At the same time, the strategic geographical location provides its uh, locational advantage, uh, being surrounded by states, Bihar, West Bengal, uh, Chhattisgarh, Uttar Pradesh, Odisha. It provides a good market base also, as well as connectivity, and there is ab abundant sunlight to provide base for the agriculture production, and there is also high domestic demand, so that the market is readily available. Uh, we have already discussed on this. The, the map is already uh, there in the Jharkhand stall so that one who has uh, interest in detailed idea about the Jharkhand in agro processing based uh, inputs, they can have a look there itself. Now we will focus on some unique crops of Jharkhand. Uh, we will take uh, for example Rugda. There is, a, uh, there is a small mushroom type of uh, vegetable you can say. Uh, it is found in all the sal forest area that is moist deciduous area and has a very high local demand. It's a daily uh, part of the plate of the local uh, tribal uh, culture. It has a benefit of higher proteins, vitamins, minerals and uh, heart health and it contains around near uh, zero carbohydrates. It can process as pickle but what we need is a, a food technologist and uh, those who are interested in processing, they can also create some new opportunities out of this unique crop. And it can be branded and marketed in some new forms. Uh, you can see there is kudrum which can be, which, which has so many benefits and can be processed as tea, sauce, syrup and juice. Bamboo suit, and then we can see there is variety of red rice, black rice. There is a unique thing called footkal. Uh, it is cultivated in Simdega and Gumla region and has high antioxidant uh, contains uh, antimicrobial properties and it can be processed uh, as pickle chutney and uh, not only this there is a variety of leafy vegetables if, if I can take my example as a uh, when I was uh, DC in Simdega uh, we filtered out around 52 unique leafy vegetables to cater to the anemia and malnutrition in our district and all those have a, a unique properties of benefits to the children and lactating mother and we are painted all around the district it helped uh, in reducing the anemia and malnutrition to a large extent in the district itself so the jharkhand has a tremendous potential in those who are interested in a medicinal plant or or these type of unique things which can be sold in those market uh, which has uh, as he has said gen z or gen x uh, uh, public who want something new for health benefits. And now we, we, we are focusing on the millets, uh, already uh, much has been told by uh, the Secretary Sir as well as the Professor Arun. Uh, the focus is on ragi but we have a variety of uh, minor millets, foxtail millet, barnyard millet, kodo, proso and uh, I will just take one example which will show as as in how many potentiality the state holds in uh, millet production, millet uh, processing and uh, branding as well as marketing. There is a district called uh, Gumla. Uh, it is infested by a uh, high level of anemia, malnutrition and uh, the agriculture is totally dependent on irrigation. So initially before the green revolution they were totally dependent on millet production, a few only on the rice paddy but the green revolution has changed the culture to paddy cultivation and uh, 
to cater to the needs of uh, tackling anemia and malnutrition on one hand as well as the agriculture production and drought related matter on the other the the administration tried to uh, intervene and had a discussion with the farmers those who are willing to intervene or uh, volunteer for uh, finger millet production ragi which was suitable for that land uh, so around 3000 farmers they they came up with the uh, with this project to uh, to change over from paddy to ragi cultivation and within a year the the output that was seen uh, the output as well as the involvement and the benefits that it gave to the public uh, it uh, created such huge uh, we we would say news that within the next year itself there were around 30000 farmers who are willing to participate in uh, that thing the as we have seen in uh, Mr. Arun's uh, list of those varieties, we picked up the Karnataka University uh, number 67 ragi uh, seed suitable for that land and it uh, changed the scenario of uh, around now 30,000 uh, farmers as well as household who have picked up this uh, millet mission that was launched by the administration. So uh, now it is only distributed the seed is distributed by the women being grown by the women and being procured by the women processed by the women at a ragi processing center which is in the district headquarter uh, they have now started packaging branding through various government schemes and you as you can see there is a millet cafe right in the center of the district uh, headquarter market it is very hit it, it is uh, giving a, or providing as many varieties which can be made by maida so it's a very healthy replacement of the uh, choice of uh, snacking for the public and there is ragi bhujia cookie laddu nimki which can be packaged and sold uh, all through the uh, area so this is this is one of the small intervention that a very small district uh, called gumla or the local women can see the women's empowerment uh, as well as the nutritional empowerment can see but but the request is to the to the all the entrepreneurs entrepreneurs as well as those who are having startups in this area that a small small push from your end can create wonders if they can create wonders you can definitely so uh, i request all those who are interested in jharkhand in agro processing horticulture processing as well as millet pro uh, processing that whatever the area is, uh, be it research, be it processing, branding, packaging, you are our most welcome. And there are variety of policies which supports all these things. Uh, uh, later on, uh, Secretary Industry Sir will also detail about the policies that will support, as well as Secretary Agriculture Sir has already told about the Agriculture Millet Mission, which is also helping this. Thank you so much. Namaskar, Johar. Thank you so much, sir, for taking us through uh, the Jharkhand uh, landscape as well as, you know, that interesting case study on Gumla. What a fantastic case study which can be, I think, easily replicated uh, across uh, not only the state but also, uh, you know, other states in India. Um, and I think as sir mentioned, you know, it goes beyond, uh, you know, some something like some initiative like Gumla goes beyond pure health benefits but it also impacts, uh, you know, topics like livelihoods women empowerment uh, and other areas as well. So I think thank you so much, sir, for that. Um, in fact, what I'm seeing is, you know, what I, it's my general belief because I think there are a lot of uh, people who are becoming more and more health conscious. And I believe there is the next decade is going to see something of a sustainable food revolution of sorts. And I think millet is going to be at the heart of uh, such a revolution as well. With that, um, let me invite uh, Mrs. Aruna Tirki on that. Uh, yeah, uh, because she's kind of working on the revival of millets in Jharkhand and our uh, own food venture as well. We'll hear more from her. Mrs. Arna. So on the dais, Secretary Industry, Secretary Agriculture, Director Industry and all dignitaries, Professor from Agriculture and all delegates from the different parts of the country. I would like to give my sincere thanks to the 
food processing unit to given me this chance to share before you all about my Ajamimba initiative. So everybody, Johar. So this is the day actually when I was in the year of 2016. I visited a one rural market and I asked for the one millet, that is the little millet, the gondli. Uh, one uh, farmers asked me, what you do this millet? I said, no, I will eat this. And when I asked to them, what you will do actually with this gondli millet? They said, in the year of 2016, they said, we just grown it for our cattle. So this went into the very deep notion because my father used to telling us, we were having the millet, uh, the gondli bhat. We were that time, in the before the 60s, my father, mother, they used to, and my mother, when they used to, she used to go their family, and she used to bring the gondli, and very, uh, the yeah, the, she used to prepare the gondli halwa or the kheer. And that day I made in the market, that the people, the our rural people, they are saying, we are using our gondli and the madwa for the cattle of the, our, the cattle. So that, from our journey, start, this is the case of my 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 story, our journey started. Fortunately, I too participated in the year of 2016 on the occasion of Indigenous Day in the cuisine competition. The Indigenous Cuisine Competition and fortunately, I got the first award of the Jharkhand Cuisine. From there, I started my journey. There are the possibilities to revival of our indigenous food system which is being lost and disappeared. And my focus was the only millet, that is from the Gondli and the Madwa. And started and, and 2017, 2017, I started as a Ajya Memba. Ajya Memba means a very tasty in our Kuruk language. This is the Kuruk language of the Urao community. I started its a restaurant come training center in the year of 2017. And the millet was the first focus. This is, you can see our the initiative and uh, the 17th and with the approach of forest to farm to plate approach where the millet was the basic focus. Because the problem was the people neglecting the nutrition cultural laws, <coughs> which is our in the particular when you talk about the jharkhan our the first the early right, the millet was our first before the green revolution. So uh, this was the problem. We just uh, uh, started to to put the our initiative through this. And uh, when we talk about the the Ajya member and its production of the millet through the millet, what are their, the basic points, the, which is based on the sustainable production and consumption. We already listen our agriculture professor secretaries, what they already told about the millet and its, uh, you know, the status. So basically what we are doing on the sustainable, the local, because it's a local native crop, sustainable, uh, we using the sustainable forest use also sustainable local which the based on the sustainable local income and employment uh, i may ask uh, to the our uh, that ye if they uh, give us the another presentation i uh, i circulate the second presentation yeah so when we talk about this yeah. Uh, this is all about our uh, the millet works, what we are doing, the value addition as far as the, uh, the value chain system. Uh, when we talk about the millet growing in the Jharkhand, what we, we already listen right now, the challenges of the millet, production of the millet. But under the Ajay Memba initiative, what we are doing uh, under the farm to the forest approach, the value chain system, we took the one district, particular the Kolebera block of the Simdega district from last year. Last year, last year with the one farmer as an experimental basis, we put particular the Gondli millet and the 
uh, little millet because in our through our restaurant the meeting of the our client it was increasing day by day over the period of the five years so we were unable to meeting the our demand from the market so we we went to the village area to starting the value chain so we uh, uh, we cultivated around 2 acres of land the particular 2 acres of land in the gondli millet about 1 and half kg only sir 1 and half kg of gondli and we harvested around 115 kg of gondli there in the kolebira block there is a one panchayat that is the sahpur panchayat one uh, one and half kg of gondli we harvested 115 kg kg of the gondli and that is the little that is the seed the desi seed and we in our restaurant we serve the people now we are starting to serving the people through our own production that is what we started the forest to the farm to the plate approach yes so this is our initiative uh, Ajam Emba and Millets uh, through this uh, we uh, in the year of 2018 uh, I was worked with the India for eco food and I served the millet produce around 10 schools among three districts of Jharkhand in the year of 2018 where we added we made a different value addition of from the millet like I started the initiative of the madhwa momo the gluten free momo i started only so i represented it among the school that was given that was given to our coming generation because until unless we develop the platter we cannot say ki hame millet khilana hai logon ko madhwa dena because aap jab tak aap plate mein jitne bhi buffet mein rakh do people we go that the gluten food until unless our coming generation where we can't develop the platter of the year. So I started to uh, making the fusion for the millet like uh, I started the madhwa momo, I started the pious from the gondli, I started the pitha that is we call the traditionally the, dhut, the dhutu pitha. These are I started and we served under the India for eco food around the 10 schools of Dhanbad, Jamshedpur and Jharkhand. 2000, uh, 2019, I, as a member, I made a register under the company Private Limited. And the same year, I was a member of the Slow Food International. This is the platform of the Slow Food, and I, I made a Slow Food, as a member, Slow Food community there. And that was the millet was the focus. And the same year, I visited to under the slow food banner under the slow food banner visited to the Saparum of Japan and there I told before the around 500 people those who gather from the 60 country the food system of Jharkhand and presented there about the Gondli one type of the sir was telling I presented there in the area of 2019 the the Kudrum uh, rice there uh, rice uh, Kudrum tea there and the sauce the chutney the traditional preparation there in the Japan and uh, we made taste among the 300 people the millet item and the kudrum item there and 2000 uh, next 2022 with the same banner the slow food banner I visited 2022-23 visited Italy and Taiwan and made the people the millet item basically the gondli kheer and the Gondli uh, millet madhwa ka dumbo the traditional item and people made tasting there the millet item there in the 2022 and 23 among the 160 country was gathered there and the 200 people I prepared there in the year of 2022 and 23 so you can see the picture of uh, seriously the one is the from the Italy second one is the Taitung Japan and the yeah, I was preparing the millet item there and how I was uh, 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 just it is not visiting there it is knowing about the community the tribal community 
through this experience i can i am explaining our tribal community ki you are telling our food is the garibon ka khana hai but this is not the garibon ka khana this is the super food and the people at the super food level at the international level i am representing this through my aja member initiative making making of the aja member slow food community uh with the same the 2024 uh, the when the 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 demands there has become a challenge for me the demand at the uh, restaurant level or at the globally uh, the national level it is not i started as a export business just just to avail the people i was just uh, challenging of the meeting of the demand of um, uh, of the uh, people of millet and the gondli so i started to the community level working with the value chain so in the 2023 i already explained to putting the millet gondli and the madwa because when i was listening to my parents the gondli and the next was the madwa was the main millet was for the jharkhand as per the climate is concern of the jharkhand so you won't believe without putting any input in the kolibira block of sahpur panchayat just we sown the gondli just we sown the gondli of 1.5 kg and we harvested 1 and 15 kg of gondli in 2 acres of land of one farmer that was people were laughing there ki madam we can't believe that aapne to hame 30 saal baad ye gondli upjwaya hai hamare khet mein this year people from the same village we cultivated there in 10 acres of land gondli and millet among the seven farmers with the same panchayat because last year they were very much aware about this the looking the harvest of the gondli and the millet they say your is the desi millet and ours is the hybrid millet you can keep your seeds up to the 10 years and we can't so this year more more uh, seven to 10 farmers they came to me and they give their land and they themselves they started the cultivation of the millet and we millet we with the uh, indigenous seeds of the finger millet but we the using the technology in a modern technology like using of the desi gobar and uh, that cultivated in a that uh, replantation matter we just made a sapling of the uh, millet uh, finger millet and we just did the replantation manner and this year we cultivated of the 10 acres of the land in that village so this is what ajay member is doing among the forest farm to the plate approach once we just we are talking about to the millet it's just super food we can do the packet we can do the value addition but we should also keep concern about what millet we are telling to our farms whether again they are doing the pesticide millets or the real variety because again then it will become a like a weeds and the rice like again the in the millet will say the green revolution so we should concern about from now onwards ki what type of millet we should concern so this what is my initiative i am just as a model basis i am doing through aja member so this is and the next this year only one project uh, slow food uh, under the slow food banner i made a one uh, to aware the people because we are saying ki the village people they are not interested and there is a challenge but until unless they will feel realize this is our own the pride of their own you know the food we are telling the food system of the jharkhand of the, among the tribal rural until unless they will realize ki yes this is our food they will feel the pride so keeping that ye we made a, a food festival among two region gumla and one will one was the simdega and the at the state level we made a uh, in adre house we made a slow food festival and the millet was the focus in that so this is um, uh, for the time concern just this i can say again a 
very thanks to the industry department to given me this the very the opportunity to share my Aja Memba initiative. So I am looking forward uh, again going to the looking forward in a very short manner just uh, the Aja Memba revenue model uh, in a, another two minutes and this is the restaurant uh, we have the Aja Memba revenue model the restaurant and dining and catering product selling and uh, training and consultation and when we go to the uh, our um, uh, and, um, profit graph or the scaling of our business this is just uh, uh, the revenue from the operations in a very small the when I started after the company in the year of 2019 uh, I started from the white to 6000 this is the revenue from the the 14,000 20,000 that was the very uh, less this is a revenue from the operation and uh, when we saw just I want to uh, share before you key what is the, the demand and the how it is going through the demand among the people particular our this indigenous food system just I want to show you I started with them in a when I was starting this in a uh, uh, the break even point and went to uh, started with the 6000 and up to the, the 2024 my profit up to the one lakh it is not very much but just I want to show you the graph of this how it is going through uh, how it is going through starting from the, uh, the uh, 6000 to the up to the 97 point around 1 lakh of the profit so there is the chances to invest in this site when we go to uh, scaling up uh, this uh, you know the food system particularly when we go to the millets on the uh, the uh, the the jharkhand uncultivated greens and uh, farm uh, uh, the forest produce so this is uh, what i want to show you thank you jihar Thank you so much, Aruna Ji. In fact, the passion aapka ke I am sure it has energized all of us here. Uh, and, the, uh, and I think much more than the profits, I think the impact that you've created um, in local communities, as well as I think you've taken you know, the local foods uh, to global platforms as well. Can we have a big round of applause for Aruna Ji? Uh, next, uh, we'll have uh, Manish Piyush Ji who's the co-founder of Purish Delhi. He'll talk about the challenges faced by various entrepreneurs and uh, how does Jharkhand offer, uh, you know, opportunities. Uh, good afternoon and Johar. Uh, honorable dignitaries on the stage and uh, my fellow audience. And I think uh, a lot of entrepreneurs are here. I can see a lot of foreign dignitaries are here. I think, uh, no better platform here where we have a global audience and entrepreneur and the state working together that how we can make Jharkhand a state having a global brand. Uh, we started in 2019. Before that, I was abroad many years and like, you know, you are an audience, I was an audience there from 2018, 2017. I was always thinking that whether this is a right choice to start a business in Jharkhand. No, when you say that, people will say, oh, why don't you go to, you know, prosperous states or XYZ states and why Jharkhand? And my four years journey, I think I'll be very practical because I'm an entrepreneur. I will not give you theoretical data. My practical approach and my uh, story has been that what special advantages you will get apart from the government policies, apart from the uh, opportunities. Opportunities are always there. Any business is an opportunity, but how you make profit out of it, that is a challenge to an entrepreneur. And I will talk about more about that. So, uh, as the company is Purish Daily, it's a merge of what Purish, uh, pure and fresh, and we deal with dairy products. We started with dairy products because dairy is an essential product, and then we moved to frozen and ready to eat, and now millets. And how millet became, you know, a force for us that it has to be done. I will real, I will tell about that. So this is our product range. We are based out of Ranchi, and we have a state-of-the-art facility. Uh, this is all. Uh, I already mentioned we are doing around 8 crores turnover last year and this year we should reach around more than 12 to 13 crores. We have employed more than now it's around 80 plus people. What business model we do? You can call us, we are the big baskets for country delight of Jharkhand. Though, you know, we, normally these brands are visible in metros, but we have created our own customer base where my customer base is the upper or middle class, high paying base. 
we deliver customers, we can order whatever products I mentioned there up to 2 a.m. in the midnight. We are the only company which take orders up to 2 a.m. in the midnight and deliver next day 7 a.m. at your doorstep. We also have B2B space. When we realized that uh, we have a facility, then the same customers also wanted good, healthy products, nutritious products uh, at restaurants, at Horeka, cafes, etc. Then we started moving into that. And most of the superior uh, hotels, restaurants, cafes, etc. are our markets. This is our plant facility, it's a state of the art facility with around 15,000 liters per day capacity for dairy products. Uh, we have adopted farms, we have FPOs from where we do sourcing from Bihar, Bengal also, we have vendors where products which can be made here are dairy products, ready to eat products, millet based products. This is our team, uh, we are co-founded by two people, we both were working at reputed companies and uh, this is the team uh, we have. We have a lot of media accreditations. Now, why I'm showing the picture of team, and this is where the advantage comes. You know, yesterday I was, we have a stall here also, and so there were many youth who were into food processing institutes. They, came, they were coming to me and asking, sir, can I get some job at your company, etc. And many people of, many students there were from Jharkhand. So imagine a company in Jharkhand where uh, students already trained and experienced from a different state. So somebody else trained them, somebody else invested on them, and you get a ready-made ready -made manpower at a less lower salary. Because he, that is his home state. Suppose somebody is getting X in Delhi, he is ready to move at much lower than X at move in Rachi. So my cost advantage, an entrepreneur has to work on two things, either cost and quality. So this is an advantage which you get when you start a business in Jharkhand. And most of the people were working in Noida. I have people who were working in Google and came back to our home state and developed the technology. I have food technologists who were, who were working at NFTRI, Lucknow. He could easily move to Delhi, but he moved to chose to Jharkhand because he had family there. And we all know that Indian uh, diaspora is global and Jharkhand diaspora is Indian. And in any state, in any workforce, you will find people from Jharkhand. They want to come back, but are there opportunities there? So we have to create as an entrepreneur. Why we have to expand into millets? I'll tell you a very practical approach. We never had intention before 2022. I was also not aware what is a millet. Honestly, I used to consume millet, but health benefits, etc., which sir told, I was not aware. I used to visit Aruna Ram's restaurant as a luxury, or I had to uh, bring my foreigner friends who used to come from abroad and take for taste. But the health benefits per se, I was not aware. But my customers, when they were consuming natural, clean, guilt-free, you know, the guilt-free is the new word. And millets has the potential to create, to convert junk food into a healthy food. You know, all the junk food, momos we say it's a junk food. But there is a restaurant in Ranchi who makes ragi momos. And it has an equal crowd, much higher crowd. Because you, you know, somehow become guilt free when I eat ragi momos. Similarly, other products also. So my urban customers, they started demanding, you are giving us healthier products. Your name suggests for your health. Why are you not introducing millets? So this forced us to you know, introduce healthy products. Now the, now the challenge for an entrepreneur comes, am I going to be a very similar uh, option for a customer? Because when you talk about millets, the millet products, you will have hundreds of stalls offering here millet, variety, millet products. You have competition with Tata Soul Food, you have competition with Kellogg's. So whether, whether millet Kellogg's or millet conflicts is an option for me, maybe not. An entrepreneur has to create always a disruption and innovation. So, we thought, can we bring into something else? A millet chow mein may be an option, but millet Thai pad noodle. Imagine the niche which it brings. That is for Gen Z, because now Gen Z wants to, you know, be have a selfie with her photo. So are you providing that option for the Gen Z and creating a high value? Because, you know, as an entrepreneur, I have to create a margin. I have to create a value in my price. So the same chow mein, which is available at maybe 100 rupees a kg, a Thai pad noodles, you can check um, on Amazon, it is not less than 2,000 rupees kg. So how you, I, you can create that? So that is an opportunity. And Jharkhand brings that opportunity because Jharkhand, as Ma'am also showed, hasn't learned to use pesticides, honestly, like the other green revolution. So most of the products are almost organic. It just needs a certification. I was attending the previous session of APEDA and the certification agencies. So mostly you will, I was surprised to see that 40% of the agri produce under the organic are unregularized. Means I am consuming it organic, but it, ha it has not been stamped. And that opportunity will get in Jharkhand 
that when you will go for testing, it will almost cover most of the certification which is required. That is there. So healthier options, Thai fried noodles, cookies, granolas. I was, uh, Abhishek is there, he's a fellow entrepreneur here. I went to Niftim stall here. Niftim stall has Mahua granola bars. So I would request, you know, these are Gen Z products because the fast moving life, we travel in morning in the metros. I want a granola. Can I granola Mahua be introduced? Then it can be sold at maybe 100 rupees a bar. Whereas a Mahua Laddu maybe you might be selling at 10 rupees or 15 rupees. So that's the opportunity for the entrepreneur, which I think a fellow entrepreneurs, youngsters here can take up as a challenge and bring up and create huge profits. Buns, mixes, smoothies, these are the new, uh, you know, uh, I, I was in Korea in 2019, I lived there for 10 years. I was shocked when I saw, uh, you know, tapioca uh, bubbles. This has become a craze. The bubble teas, you know, has a craze. And, you know, I had that time an idea that this sabudana, my mother used to eat during a vrat, and now this has become a Gen Z product. So that's the opportunity which can bring. Horeka segment, uh, we supply to the five-star hotels, etc., in Bengal and as well as Jharkhand. They started asking me that I have a lot of foreigner clients checking in my hotel. Can you give me pre-mixes for my breakfast menu, millet-based? We never had thought about that. So we started building on that. Millet breads, multi-grain flours, pre-mixes for patty coatings. Example, we have now working on, you know, paneer is a dairy product which you make. Paneer with your millet-based crispy coatings. It has less glycemic index, so it creates, brings that crispiness, which other maida, we, we add starch for that, you know, to bring that crispiness. So millet-based coatings can be brought. Batters, a lot of batters, these uh, Horeka segment are asking. Roasted millets. Uh, which is for healthier snacking, baked basically, and bakery mixes. So these are very off the line products which will not find on Google or you know on a normal PPT where you know uh, what should be an ideal product mix for millets. And you can know, you can see that we know that McDonald's launched multi million bun. Why it has to? It is such a big giant, uh, the biggest giant I think in food industry we know had forcibly had to bring because it had to bring guilt free burger. When you go to McDonald's, to a premium restaurant, you can ask a millet bun, which is expensive, but still you feel healthy that, okay, you cannot avoid eating a McDonald's burger, but okay, I have taken a healthier burger. So what we are looking for is apart from cultivation, we heard cultivation is definitely government is taking a lot of initiatives. Uh, the farmers are becoming more and more excited and encouraged about it. But important factor is where to sell. When we talk about market linkages, important factor is if there is a demand from the industry, automatically the farmer has to be forced to cultivate. So are we those players, are we as an entrepreneurs, as an industry uh, to create that force that yes, you have to produce? Uh, there are very success stories in Jharkhand, uh, Safal, uh, Mother Dairy. Mother Dairy changed the landscape of Khunti area, your Mandar area, these are small places in Jharkhand where they started cultivating sweet corn, baby corn, as well as your peas. In more than 500 acres, maybe the cultivation has been done because an industry was established which was ready to source these products and farmers' income has increased. So these are products we know. So as I already told that when you talk about food processing, I'm a food processing company and I know that just making a small product with a minimum of packaging is not enough to sell in the market. And competing with just what other big giants are doing, then maybe after five years you have to shut your company. So important is, as an entrepreneur, can I bring a very differentiated product? And who is my niche audience? And create my space. I'm a dairy player, and I'm competing with the biggest of the players, Amul, Britannia, Mother Dairy. But how I have created my space? Because I have created a service model. I have created a different packaging model. I have created some different taste. This is how, with millets, I think we can also do that innovation is required in terms of small entrepreneurs should create their own niche space in doing that. Example, as I told uh, Ragi Momos, samosas everywhere in East you will find every 10th shop is a samosa shop or a Golgappa shop. If you come to Ranchi, every 10th shop is a Golgappa shop. You know, the water balls, if uh, the foreigners are aware. But can you make it village based? Can you change that? Can you differentiate that? Bujiyas, we already saw, halwas, etc., we already saw. But this is the different. Pet food. Pet food, I think, is again a very fast CAGR, very high growth industry. Because not only cattle feed, we see in rural areas we give it a cattle feed, but in pet food, pet food, your dog or cat food, that is also millet based. That is also a high-paying 
because mostly you know rich people can afford uh, you know uh, pets so that is an opportunity where entrepreneurs can explore and let me tell you that jharkhand per se can be a great processing setup cultivation will take time and seeds procurement is automatically a process but we can source from pan india we have neighboring sources also we have northeastern areas also and we can create small processing units and automatically when farmers will see that yes there is a processing facility available they will start growing i'll tell you that why jharkhand uh, should be our investment destination it has one of the best export policies i am a exporter i am have an export license apeda gives a special status because jharkhand is a landlocked state we have up to we have apeda stall here just find out what are the schemes there for landlocked state we have up to 75% subsidy i think the biggest subsidy pot possible in any any food processing there in, on a project cost if you have a packaging area if you have refer vehicle if you have this vehicle 75% ranchi i think ranchi is one of the cities which has the uh, nearest airport it's in the city itself 20 kilometers and with the sepa and other guidelines which has happened export model is very much available in same day your products can reach middle east africa is there all possible destination air if, if it is a perishable item or even if it's a long life item then also haldia port is just 7 hours away the infrastructure is so good that all such opportunities are available i have given you the market it's a more 24 billion dollar industry and africa southeast asia middle east these are fast entry areas why to wait for europe or america usa these are fast areas where you know millet imports i have data from apeda also that imports from africa has increased on a very high level in recent years favorable ecosystem as i already told i'll connect to that see an entrepreneur always works on data so i did last one and a half year i researched that which season which crop is available at what price and i can bet these are one of the minimalistic prices you will get pan india we did that we had a lot of study different in different states so even if you are moving for as sir also told that if you are working on multiple processing because you know a single product mix entrepreneur cannot be sustainable it has to go for all season production because you have a factory you have people you have to pay so when we go for multiple processing if you go for vegetable processing vegetable dehydration long shelf life production frozen technology also you have one of the lowest prices available and round the year you have different products available now example cauliflower it is available round the year peas also now it, it has been stretched to 5 months earlier it was just 2 months so we have found that you get lo lower cost also lower utility cost see when you establish a factory pricing at times you cannot control this is depending upon your buyers your wholesale prices if you are a commodity then it is regulated by government but when you go for your uh, entrepreneur can best work on lowering its cost lowering of cost i will tell you an example just few months back uh, somebody uh, a manufacturer of uh, boiler fuel they came to us and they offered us the price he was he was supplying to chatisgarh odisha etc and when i calculated the price which was offering i said hey i am sitting on a state which produces the largest coal and coal is the biggest utility cost you, because you run a boiler you you generate you know power through that i have i run a plant because i know the what cost is there so when i calculated that all the industries apart from jharkhand who are there in place are spending much more on fuel at least 20 to 30% more than fuel whereas in our plant we are consuming lesser so i have an opportunity my fuel cost is lower my labor cost is lower i have government schemes i got opportunity through pmfme scheme etc there are subsidies etc there are policies etc now the challenge is only the market and innovation so i think we have well deserving and well educated entrepreneurs here that challenge an entrepreneur has its own journey that has to bring and most of the products are in close proximity see jharkhand you can cover maximum is 600 kilometers it's not a big state and very well networked very well connected so always from farm to your factory it can be reached in 4 hours and we know who deal in perishable food processing 4 hours or 5 hours is the ideal time whether it deal, deal with milk or vegetables after 4 hours or 5 hours if you don't reach the nearest processing factory the deterioration of the mineral or the nutrient value deteriorates so that is definitely available in jharkhand what support we need sir definitely millet uh, jharkhand we are all working on cultivation or empowering fpos etc but we also need to think beyond that post harvest uh, processes example we need common centers we already knew that the, uh, the shelf life is lesser so we need common processing centers 
which are in nearby. It can be on a public-private model also. We need MAP packing, which is like, uh, if you come to my stall, you will see that we package rasgullas or gulab jamuns, which have 15 days life. It has equal taste on day one and day 15. It is all possible because we use MAP packing, because we remove the ambient temperature. And same is possible for millet. But I feel very tragic because I buy mahua laddus in every stall wherever I go. But it will deteriorate after seven days. And you don't eat laddus every day. Maybe you will keep it for a function which is seven days away. But it will start deteriorating. But you need, if you have a technology of MOP, MAP packing, cold chain facilitation, ready to eat. Arunaji makes delicious food. Very good food and very organic, we all know. But can I get that in Delhi? Can I get when I was abroad? Not possible. Why it should be limited? Yesterday, sir, I was in the food stall here. And I can challenge that one of the highest crowd was on the Jharkhand stall. That means people loved the chilkas or the dhuskas or what were being served. But why should Haldiram only pack aloo parathas? Why should they only pack choles? Why can't they freeze dry or give export market a chilkas or the dhuskas or the gulgullas or whatever you call them? If man has a recipe, we as an entrepreneur have an opportunity to freeze dry it, to packet it, and send to so many diaspora which are worldwide and earn at least five times more margin that she earns in her restaurant. That is possible. We talked about that a uh, lot of R&D is being done at Bristol Agriculture University. Uh, I have been there. I respect the team there. But it, can all, it cannot be done without an industry partnership. What end user wants, what a industry wants, and what is being researched, that has to be always connected and on a real-time basis. So we want that a dedicated millet R&D processing institute. We are doing on R&D seeds, etc. that is required. But we need a <coughs> millet R&D and training institute like we have NFTRI, we have CFTRI. Why can't we have some GFTRI? Something like that, an institute. There is no food processing institute per se that is required, sir. Because we face, because whenever we send products for sampling, it deteriorates. There is a huge expense in sending that. And we are not able to experiment. We are not able to uh, bring that advanced technologies, which is available in other states. We said that there is a millet mission. A millet mission is definitely for growers, cultivators. But we need a millet policy. If some entrepreneur, you said that there is a startup. Now it has to be quantified, sir. It has to be made, you know, per se that, suppose I make these many quintals of millet products. What benefit will I get? What subvention will I get? What back-ended support? Because honestly, as an entrepreneur, we face a couple of challenges uh, of ecosystem. If I bring a machine, there are a lot of machines uh, which here are displayed of millet processing from Thanjavur, from Tamil Nadu, from Kerala, from Sonipat. All these are or from even from Pune. But for an entrepreneur, uh, the transport cost is huge. So the ecosystem requires not only cultivators, not only processors, but packaging material makers, machine makers, machine technicians, uh, repairs, etc. I'll tell you very honestly that because when a machine breaks down, I have to call somebody from you know Delhi. I have to spend ten thousand rupees to bring that mechanic to you know solve that issue. So we need a concentrated, you know, concerted effort in terms of creating that ecosystem and a policy which is beyond PMFME or other state policies for entrepreneurs, because uh, I would know that a PMFME covers our policy, but if we are focusing especially on millet, we need a dedicated special policy, be it a short policy, but a policy, until the, your markets, dedicated to the markets, till it get matured. We can create a millet mandi, which talk about, for selling and sourcing of harvest as well as semi-processed, we can create that. It can be a public, uh, private model, and as well as bulk buying of finished products for white labeling. Example, we as a company, if any entrepreneur, any buyers there who are from different parts of the world, they are looking for white labeling, we are welcoming those, uh, uh, those business houses and we want to uh, create such more entrepreneurs also. People are waiting here. We have no few of the entrepreneurs who can do that uh, customization or that flexibility of the type of finished product which you want for millet. And uh, we are very much encouraged because I see a lot of uh, exciting opportunities there. I see a lot of uh, manpower who are willing to work in this area. And I think that in coming years, I think, sir, we would definitely find a Made in Jharkhand brand, which sir has also done like Made in Gumla 
I can see that it's a very good product which is there in into variety of other products so that you know all the major global palettes has the made in Jharkhand brand available and the businesses there earn the maximum margins and profit as much as is possible and we have more success stories. Thank you so much. Thank you, Manish, for uh, talking about your experience of being in, uh, you know, Jharkhand. Also, you know, the kind of work that Puresh Daily is doing. Also, and I'm sure, you know, as part of the presentation, you mentioned idea. You've given ideas both to the industry as well as to the government. Uh, I'm sure those are very, very relevant as well. Uh, with that, let me just invite uh, Jitendra Kumar, sir, uh, to talk about uh, industrial policies that are, um, that in Jharkhand's industrial policies specifically catering to food processing as an industry. Sir. It's a difficult task to speak when, every, when everyone has already spoken. I think much already has been discussed about millets. So I'll focus more uh, primarily on the policy perspective. Respected uh, Secretary of Agriculture, sir, uh, esteemed panelists, two of whom are uh, great entrepreneurs, two different models, two uh, different market segments, two different approaches, yet equally successful. A uh, big kudos to both of them. Uh, we have heard uh, scientists also, we have heard uh, from an industry perspective also, we have heard from the agriculture perspective also, and from entrepreneurs also. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, uh, industrialists, entrepreneurs, aspiring entrepreneurs, uh, and dear friends. First of all, I would like to say again, uh, Johar, because many of my earlier colleagues have uh, uh, said this word, uh, Johar. So maybe uh, many of the persons, many of the people sitting here may not be aware what exactly is Johar. So just to introduce Johar, uh, Johar is a greeting only. Uh, like in North India, we say Namaste and South, we say Vanakkam. Similarly, in East, in Jharkhand state, we say it, Johar. So Johar is a greeting one. Second, uh, because I can see some of the people here, including some of the uh, guests from the abroad. So I want to introduce my state, Jharkhand state, to the audience first, and then I'll focus more, more on the policy perspective. So uh, when we say Jharkhand, so Jharkhand is the state located in the eastern part of the country. It is adjoining Odisha, West Bengal, Bihar, etc., and it was uh, uh, formed in uh, November 2000. Uh, this uh, November 2000, so it is almost uh, 24 years old uh, state. Uh, it has a tremendous potential. People are vibrant and tremendous uh, vibrant eco, eco industrial ecosystem. It has around 32 million people uh, living in Jharkhand. It's a landlocked state. Though Manish has already introduced the subject, but I'll just elaborate uh, a bit further on that. Uh, as we know that. Uh, uh, Jharkhand is predominantly a rural uh, oriented state. So around 76% of the population lives in rural areas, 24% lives in urban areas only. And then uh, uh, out, out of total entire area, around 60% area falls in a forest uh, covered area. So much of the land is not available for the industrial sector. Many of the, much of the land has already logged uh, for the forest sector. So that's why we are called Jharkhand. Jharkhand means Jhar means uh, these uh, uh, shrubs and uh, uh, the land where the shrubs grow naturally. Uh, further to further elaborate on that, uh, uh, we uh, we have had uh, the uh, when we talk about the industrial ecosystem in the estates, so, so that the advantage Jharkhand has. So Jharkhand, as Manish has already told, that now we have our airport at Ranchi. I'll elaborate further that now we have an, another airport at Devgar also. And with the Devgar airport, with the direct connectivity from the Del from Delhi, so the entire economic potential of the Santhal Pargana re region has got unlocked. So now we have the direct connectivity to, to that area also. Apart from that, 33 national highways cross uh, from our state. So that gives a very good advantage in terms, in terms of logistics uh, availability. We have a multimodal terminal hub in Sahibganj districts in the uh, uh, northeastern parts of part of the uh, state. Then uh, we have around more than 2,500 kilometer uh, uh, length of uh, uh, railway line. So this kind of uh, logistic availability and the infrastructure gives an advantage from an industrial perspective. We have a vibrant industrial ecosystem in. Uh, Aditpur industry area. Around 1,500 units are already functioning there. Most of them are in auto and auto ancillary industries. Then we have a, a 
a big anchor industry called Data Motors there and around 800 uh, auto ancillaries are working just to support that Tata Motors anchor industry. Uh, when we talk about uh, uh, the human potential, human resource potential, we have all kind of best available institutions there. We have, uh, as we understood that we have the British Agriculture University, but apart from that, we have IIT, we have IIM, XLRI, XISS, and then uh, 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 BIT Mesra, and you name every kind, any kind of institution, it is there. So we have all kind of mix. We have the traditional uh, resource-based economy because we ha we are number one in iron ore uh, availability. We are number one in coal. We are number one in mica. We are number one uh, in uranium. We are number two in thorium. We are number uh, two in uh, I suppose um, yes. We are number two in chromite, copper, bauxite, thorium. We are number three. So this, that kind of traditional uh, natural resource based economy was already existing in Jharkhand. So if you talk about the industrial perspective, uh, many of you must be aware about that the Tata Steel had already started working in Jharkhand as long as 120 years ago. So it is one of the oldest uh, steel manufacturing plant in Jharkhand and around 25% of the entire country the steel is produced in Jharkhand only. So this was the kind of introduction I, use, I, I wanted to give about that state and then I'll focus on the food processing policy. Apart from the food processing policy, we have some other sectoral policies also. And why we have ventured into this food processing and other sectoral policies? Because as I uh, told just now, that we are a resource-based, natural, traditional economy. Now to diversify our, our uh, uh, industrial base, from that steel, iron, you name any kind of, uh, uh, any any name, any uh, steel industry name, it is there. Whether it is ArcelorMittal or maybe JSW, JSPL, Data, or any electro steel, Vedanta, you name any company, it is there. But we have to diversify our economy. So that's why we have entered into this food processing sector, apart from other sectors also. Like we have policies for ethanol production, we have policies for electric vehicle manufacturing, we have policies for pharmacy, uh, the upcoming policy for pharmaceutical sector, now we have a, a policy for textile sector and now uh, we have come up with a new food uh, food and feed processing policy uh, which is called food jharkhand food and feed processing policy 2024 earlier we had a 2015 policy and now in a new version this new policy has been launched so please next again maja okay yeah so uh, now we, if we say that Jharkhand has three agroclimatic regions and uh, this some of the data which is there he, here that uh, what kind of uh, production is there. Uh, I'll move to next if, yeah, sorry, yeah. So we are second uh, in bale production. Uh, bale is uh, horticulture produce, you must be aware about that. We are third in lychee production. We are fourth in peas and beans. Then we are fifth in jackfruit, uh, sixth in pineapple, seventh in chilies. And when we talk about the industrial uh, food processing industry set up in Jharkhand, already existing, already working. So around uh, 16 medium industries are working there. And when we say medium, medium means those kind of industries which have a investment of less than 50 crore rupees uh, in their plant and machinery and less than, uh, the turnover is less than 250 crore rupees. So they are 16, small is, uh, small are 30 and micro units are 198. So, and these are uh, these are in fruit and vegetables and cereal, animal, the data is already there, you can see the data. The, this kind of industrial ecosystem in uh, food process sector, we already have. But we, as Manish ji has told, may, as maybe other speakers have already told, we, there is a lot of tremendous potential which we need to achieve. Uh, if you talk about the 2015 policy, the outcomes of the 2015 policy. So uh, we had a Jharkhand Food and Food Processing Policy 2015 in which uh, around 118 units got benefited. Around 1300 crore rupees of investment has already been made during this period 2015 to 2022. Then around 115 uh, uh, crore rupees in, uh, worth of disbursement incentive have already been disbursed. Uh, it has already been uh, given. Uh, this is not something that uh, which we are saying that uh, we will give. It has already been dispersed. And now uh, um, around approximately 4,800 uh, direct employment has already been generated. This is in addition to whatever indirect employment has generated uh, with that policy. Uh, 
Uh, in the new uh, industrial policy, we have tried to cover each and every aspect. We have tried to cover food processing policy, cold chain, primary processing units, ultra mega, animal, additional incentive, market development. Uh, yeah. Apart from that, uh, we have tried to cover uh, uh, meat processing also, ready to eat, ready to cook, confectionery, uh, confectionery vegetables, preservatives, freezers, and uh, 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 reefer vehicle, everything, uh, spices, cold storage, uh, fruits, everything. Uh, you name any uh, product and we have tried to cover uh, most of the products. Though, as Maniji has suggested that we should have a different uh, millet policy altogether. So, I suppose that the focus on millet uh, has grown since last year because last uh, year, that is 2023 was declared as the International Year of Millets by the United Nations. And that's after, after that, uh, uh, more focus and more emphasis has been uh, given on millets. But I think, yes, uh, there's a need, if, if we need to have another policy for millets, we will definitely come up with that. Uh, the kind of incentives which we provide in our uh, policy, the new policy, uh, uh, as I as 75% uh, incentives are being given to primary processing units. Uh, this is, I think, key. if you invest, let's say, 1,000 rupees, 750 rupees, we are reimbursing to you back again. Uh, no policy can be better than this. Uh, in normal areas, we are providing you in most of the sectors around 35% policy. You 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 invest 1,000 rupees, will immediately reimburse to 350 rupees. And if, if you are investing in uh, setting up your plant in some way in IDDP area, which is tribal area, which is already dominant, tribal dominated society, tribal dominated state. So out of these uh, 24 districts, 13 are IDDP area. So if you set up your plant uh, or maybe some uh, processing unit in that district, then we are uh, reimbursing you up to 45%. So there is a 10% additional advantage of that incentives. And, and if you are uh, setting up a primary processing unit, then we are reimbursing as high as 75%. And this is in addition to whatever, to other incentives which we are providing like SGST reimbursement 100%, quality certification up to 20 lakh rupees, patent certification, patent uh, grant uh, permission, etc., etc. So that kind of uh, reimbursement we are uh, 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 making under this policy. Uh, like we have a robust uh, export policy also. So if uh, any entrepreneur or LC, any, just say, uh, Aruna ma'am has already gone to several places and now uh, had this policy been there at that time, then I think uh, she would have claimed those incentives also. Now in our export policy, if, he, if any entrepreneur wishes to set up his or her stall in any of the country, so we are reimbursing that uh, if that entrepreneur is a women entrepreneur, then we are reimbursing as, as high as 90% of the cost for setting up that stall in that particular country subject to uh, maximum limit of four, four and a half uh, lakh rupees. And uh, if that entrepreneur go, uh, willing, is, uh, wishes to go, and if that entrepreneur is uh, a lady entrepreneur, then we are reimbursing up to 75% of the airfare cost, subject to 60,000 rupees per person. So I think that's a very lucrative policy. Apart from the transport subsidy we are providing, as you know that Jharkhand is a landlocked state, so the nearest port is Paradeep, and if you want to transport your goods inland, that for inland transport we are reimbursing up to 20 lakh rupees uh, incentive. So I think the policies are there, uh, attractive policies are there. In fact, uh, when we had formulated these policies, we had uh, uh, studied all the neighboring states policies and uh, government of India policies also, everything. And then I think this is, these are what the incentives which uh, Jharkhand is offering are one of the best in the entire country. So I would urge all the people here, all the aspiring entrepreneurs, all the investors, all the potential investors on behalf of the industry department of the government of Jharkhand to come and explore uh, Jharkhand, come and invest there. Please set up your plant if you are, if you are uh, planning to set up any kind of, even a, a small uh, uh, unit, a very, very small unit uh, if you are willing to set up a micro unit also, then rather than going somewhere, come to Jharkhand and we'll facilitate everything. And this, whatever I have told you about this financial incentives, uh, apart from that, we are also facilitating in terms of non-fiscal incentives. Like the, we have a robust single window system in which around more than one lakh applications have been received and out of which around 90% uh, percent have already been approved and uh, uh, we have a time bound public service delivery guarantee act in which you made an application and then uh, there is a legal legal uh, uh, compulsion on the part of that government authority to provide that necessary certification within the particular time frame then we have uh, uh, this single window clearance system act 
uh, which also mandates the time bound delivery of services. So Jharkhand government is offering a lot. Uh, the only need is that we need to market our estate well. And uh, this is the forum where in I, on behalf of industry department, government of Jharkhand, again urge people to come to Jharkhand and invest there, uh, invest there. And uh, if you want to, or if you are planning to set up any kind of food processing unit, please come and invest our estate. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir, for that. Uh, uh, you know, since we are running short on time, uh, while we did plan an open house session, I think we can take one question if there's a, okay, we, we have that uh, hand raised, so if you can just take that question. If you could just introduce yourself first and then, yes. where we actually develop technology for uh, agriculture. We have an experience center in Khuti we all, where we also have a farm to table restaurant and then we are actually inviting people to learn more about ingredients from Jharkhand. Having said that, uh, I thank Department of Industries for giving us this excellent opportunity to network and meet investors as well as clients from across the world. Uh, but uh, there was something I just wanted to ask, sir. Uh, with all the incentives given uh, uh, through the subsidies, there was one point I was uh, particularly intrigued about, which was uh, uh, technology IT services as an infra, since we are working on the technical side of it. Uh, that is one part I actually found missing because IT becomes a backbone in today's world to provide to uh, be it the, for the supply chain management, be it for product standardization or be it uh, for marketing. So uh, there was this point which was missing, which was IT as an infrastructure, and we'll be getting any benefits for those uh, subsidies regarding that. Thank you very much. You have a very excellent suggestion, and definitely we'll, we'll work on towards that, and if it is possible, then we'll incorporate that also. If I have an opportunity, I can, uh, can I ask all the delegates to please visit uh, the Jharkhand Pavilion and uh, check out the stalls there. We are uh, showcasing all the products we have. Thank you again. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, unfortunately, we've run out of time. Uh, but what a great session we've had. And in fact, uh, I was asked to summarize, you know, present some of the key findings. It's too difficult because the kind of uh, pointers that were discussed were absolutely and an to kind of, uh, you know, condense them into uh, summary would be very difficult. I've tried my best. I've used the word millet because we have six speakers and I've just tried to take one learning from each one of them. So the, so the first M is the millet mission 24 to 29 that we learned about. Uh, what a great thought through mission. Second, we, um, you know, with that I, I think the indigenous food revival bit that Arnaji talked about was a key, you know, key takeaway for us. The next two L's I've kind of uh, used to highlight how favorable is it to invest into Rajasthan, into Jharkhand. So the first L is obviously the leading, um, you know, industrial policy that we have, especially the food and feed policy, which is ex uh, there, you know, offering a number of incentives. And second L is the low cost. I think for all entrepreneurs, uh, you know, one of the key things is the factors of production. So the factors of production are very, very uh, competitive as compared to other states. Uh, the E, I think I would talk, uh, take, Professor Arun's point on E, which is enhancing productivity, is, which is a key ask today when we are looking at uh, millets. And lastly, the T, I think, uh, which Shushan sir talks, talked about, the transforming Gumla as a case study is one of the key takeaways for me as well. But but what a great session it's been. I think uh, it did, I am sure it was helpful for all entrepreneurs as well as investors here to look at Jharkhand as one of the key uh, states to invest into, especially looking at food processing and military related areas. Thank you everyone for, for your time and thank you for being a great audience. On behalf of department, I would like to thank each one of you and our uh, respected speakers for a very rich and fruitful discussion on millets of Jharkhand. Uh, before closing the session, Directorate of Industries would like to felicitate our speakers for today's session. Uh, so I request Mr. Pranab uh, Kumar Paul, Joint Director, Department of Industries, to please present the memento to Dr. Abu Bakar Siddiqui, who is Secretary to Government of, uh, of Jharkhand, Department of Agriculture, Animal Husbandry and Cooperative, and Department of Forestry, Environment and Climate Change. I request, sir, to pre uh, please pre present the memento.
I request sir to please present the memento to uh, Mr. Jitendra Kumar Singh, Secretary, Department of Industries, Government of Jharkhand. So you are requested to present the memento to Mr. Sushant Gaurav, Director, Department of Industries, Government of Jharkhand. <laughs> I would like to call upon Mr. Manoj Kumar Bhagat, Under Secretary, Department of Industries, to so please present the memento to Professor Arun Kumar, Assistant Professor, uh, British Agriculture University, Ranchi Jharkhand. I request Manoj sir to please present the memento to Mrs. Aruna Tirki, Founder and Managing Director, Ajam Member Private Limited. <laughs> sir, you are requested to also present the memento to Mr. Manish Piyush, Co-Founder, Purish Dairy Foods Private Limited. Last uh, but not the least, uh, I request sir to please present the memento to today's moderator for this wonderful <coughs> session, Mr. Himanshu Ratan, partner KPMG Food and Agri Services. <laughs> 